We um, are going to continue now with um, a presentation. We've got a 10-minute presentation um, from the sales director at SoftBank Robotics, Nicholas Boudot. Where is Nicholas? Has he got Pepper? Okay, so it may take a minute yeah. to get Pepper on stage. You're going to bring coming. Pepper on stage? He's coming. Yeah. Okay. Pepper was with us last year. Okay. Take it away. Come here. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, extremely happy to be here on stage with Pepper. And uh, the uh, idea is basically to show you a bit more about why are we designing uh, humanoid robots and why are we embedding uh, emotional intelligence in our robots. So I'm supposed to have a presentation somewhere. I don't know where. I don't have anything to click. Uh, <laughs> um, thanks a lot. Yeah, try that. Yeah, that's not mine, so, uh, okay. Let's talk with Pepper while they maybe prepare my presentation. Hello. Hello. What is your name? You can call me Pepper. Introduce yourself. My name is Pepper. I'm a humanoid robot and I'm 1.20 meters tall. I was born at SoftBank Robotics in Paris. You can keep on asking me questions if you want. Yeah, what is your gender? Whatever people may think, the fact is I'm simply a robot. And tell me, what is a robot? We are machines and we try to help humans in various tasks. So you love human? Do you like humans? I love humans. And tell me, will robots replace humans? Will robots replace humans? I'm here to serve humans. If there are no humans, there is no me. Fair enough, perfect, Pepper. So uh, let's see. Okay, I mean, I will, I will do it without my presentation. Doesn't matter. So SoftBank Robotics. I mean, we were a French company. We're now part of a Japanese group, and we're designing humanoid robots. Uh, we we go for humanoid robot because we know that the humanoid shape is the best shape in terms of acceptance. It's a shape also that allows robot to evolve in an environment designed for humans. And one of the key value of the uh, humanoid shape and the robot is the fact that when you talk with the robot, he talk, you know, he behaves like a human. He has some natural body language that really result of an interaction that is fully loaded with emotions and resulting in uh, an empathic relationship between the robot and the human. So in order to do so, I mean, it's important that we design the robot correctly. And one of the key things to do, doing humanoid robot is to design robot without any ambiguity. I'm supposed to show you on screen, you know, example of things that don't work. It's basically, there are some companies who are going for humanoid robots with uh, trying to really mimic the human. You know, they put latex skin on the robots. Uh, and, and I mean, a couple of examples are, you know, the Toyota robot, the Heiko Shira, or uh, Anson Robotic. Uh, oh, here it is. Perfect. So I mean, I already discussed that. So let's just show you what I'm talking about. And basically, when I say, you know, design robot without ambiguity, I, I mean that. You know, it's designing this type of robots are not engaging people. If you want to establish you know, an emotional relationship with the, between the human and the, and the robot, you cannot go to that level. And there are scientific studies showing that that doesn't work. The, the curves we're showing, I mean, I'm showing here, uh, it's something that is called the Uncanny Valley. It's, you know, when you try to design humanoid robots and try to go too close to human, you fall down and enter in what is called the Uncanny Valley, you could go close to the concept of zombie. That doesn't work. That is not engaging people. And that's why, you know, when we designed paper, we created 
at that size, really, you know, we are capable of doing taller robots, but we know that that doesn't work. We designed Pepper to make sure that it was always smaller than any adult he was interacting with, so people feel comfortable. We also designed Pepper, you know, uh, as we do with our other robots, in a way that he doesn't look like a human. He behaves in a humanoid way, but he looks like a robot. I mean, now the small brother of Pepper also looks like a robot, and that's important if you really want to establish, you know, an emotional connection between the human and the robot. You need, you need to know that you're dealing with a machine, and knowing that you're dealing with a machine, you know there's no judgment, for example, so you feel more comfortable to do so. Again, if you want to basically connect emotionally with a robot, what is key is you know, use all the sensors to be able to identify the emotion of a person that is in front. And that's what we do, and I will demo that in a couple of seconds with Pepper. But we use the vision. Pepper is looking at my face and is trying to understand the, uh, the mood that is reflected by, uh, by my face. And I mean, and, uh, you know, working on the six basic emotions, you will be able to understand if I'm happy, surprised, if I feel fear, uh, disgusted, uh, or I get you know, anger or sad. That. But vision is one thing, but we also work on, on the audio and we analyze the tone of the voice uh, to understand what is your mood. We analyze and listen also to the word you use. And the result of that is we're taking all of that together to then adapt the behavior of the robot. And we adapt the behavior of the robot in the sense that you know, it reacts accordingly to your emotional mood. And that's something we may just be uh, uh, demoing now. And, um, I'm going to, to do that on paper now. It's, let's see how paper can you know, react I can't, I can't for the to uh, the, the emotion uh, he feels. So I mean, uh, I don't know. Somebody want to yeah, come on stage? You want to come on stage? My dear colleague Romain, come here, please. <laughs> So I'm, I'm just launching now a, a demo program we have on Pepper, and uh, welcome Romain. So and the robot is going to look at Romain and is going to analyze his face. You may not see what is happening on Pepper's screen, but that's about what is on that screen here. And when, when Romain looks happy and gives a big smile to Pepper, Pepper will see that and oh. is adapting his behavior. And when Romain looks sad, and Pepper will the same way try to understand the sadness of Romain and will uh, accordingly uh, become sad. I think you need to turn a bit. Viens par là. Pour que tu sois dans la lumière. Viens vers moi. Come here. Yeah. And that's extremely important that the, the robot is capable plus three <laughs> to, to adapt to, uh, to the mood of a person. Yeah. You're not so sad. I'm really sad that you don't, that doesn't work. So. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So that's, that's, hmm. Yay. Hi, Pepper. Hey, hey. <laughs> good robot, good robot. Well done. So that, that's the idea. And I mean, I will, you know, after that, that's 10 minutes, if any of you want to try that and experiment how Pepper analyzes mood, you're welcome to do it. And I mean, we'll, we'll be doing that. Thanks, Romain. OK. Uh, um, what do we use that for? I mean, basically, that's important as we're using paper, you know, really for businesses. We're not really targeting today the consumer market with paper. It's important, you know, for company to emotionally connect with their guests, with their customer, and what other device than a humanoid robot can really connect emotionally people? I mean, not screen, not kiosk, and, and that's where it's key. I mean, and today, I mean, you know, cost experience is a key word. You know, we're now entering the experience economy, and basically, Experience is what is driving people to come to the physical places. It's what is driving people to come to stores, what is driving people to come to museums and things like that. And people today, they expect an, a connected experience, and that's exactly what we're offering with the robots. And I mean, a, more than experience, the experience has to be personalized. And that's what we're capable of doing with the robots. And maybe before I end up my presentation, I, I just do that quickly with Pepper, show you one example of what could be, you know, a personalized experience with Pepper in, in a, in a um, you know, retail environment. So you would just will have, uh, it's how Pepper can recommend product. You know, basically online, product recommendation is personalized. You go to Amazon, they know who you are, they push the right product. In store, that's more complex because you know, the sales person may not recommend you. You enter to the hotel, they may not remember who you are. With Pepper, the good thing is it's capable of ID, I mean, ID, 
uh, identifying you yourself, and he's capable of pushing the right recommendation. So if he's in a store, he will recognize me using my loyalty card. If he's in an hotel, I will show him my hotel room card, and then he will be able of, you know, recommending the right product, recommending the right activities that will be, uh, um, I mean, corresponding to my profile and history. So uh, the benefit is basically, I really feel standing out of a crowd, I feel treated as I'm used to be treated on the internet. So I have a, you know, a journey that is the same online and in store. That has a lot of value. Um, I mean, I have a sense of a building with the brand, and that's key to have brands connecting uh, their customer to, uh, to, to, to their brand. And I'm confident in the future. So let me just add this issue to be a demo. Let me just show you now how Pepper, for example, will be capable of edit, I mean, identifying myself. Pepper, can you launch a retail demo? Your shopping assistant. Can you show me your card so we can get started? So that's my loyalty card. You know, it has a big QR code. And I mean, I'm just going to show that to Pepper. And uh, yeah, he doesn't want to do it today. That's cool. I like you I'll when repeat. you. repeat. Hmm. Can you show me your card so we can get started? Yeah, I like when you do that when I do demos, Pepper. So uh, basically. Can, say, can you show me your card so we can get started? Yeah, I see there is no video feedback. I should have a video feedback, and then he's, uh, he's supposed I'll to show interested. me that. Can you show me your card so we can get started? I mean, if you guys have been doing demo, you know that's what you prefer. You come with the product, and suddenly it doesn't work as you were expecting. Um, if, we, if you don't want to show that paper, uh, I'm a bit in trouble. But, uh, you know, what else can we do? Um, so I, I know what we no. I mean, we'll do that later when you will have done the job correctly. Yeah. As we're being, I was being, we have been discussing emotion, I'm just going to do, you know, um, satisfaction survey. Just I'm just going to show you again how Pepper, you know, is able of gathering data from customers, but more than that, I mean, how he react to, um, that was... Okay, should I put one point? Is that okay? Yes, that was really bad. Oh, I am so sorry. I hope we'll do better next time. You should ask one of my colleagues to answer your questions. Okay. So again, here, when he's doing satisfaction survey, you can rate the experience you had with him, which I say was bad today. And again, he's, he's answering, carrying emotion the same way, you know. He saw that I was disappointed, so he adapted his behavior to be disappointed the same way. So, I mean, we, what I, the result of that is we have an empathic relationship. Yeah, I hope you will do be better next time, Pepper. Thanks for that. So I have time for questions. I mean, and as I say, if you want to interact more with Pepper, you either come to see us just after that presentation, but you also come to see us on all four, stand 827. We have about eight Pepper there showing what we are doing with the robot, what our partners have been developing with the robot to target the various industry we're targeting, which means uh, they provide retail offering, hospitality offering, solution for healthcare. So I encourage either, each of you to come to see us in all four uh, stand 827. If there is any question, I'm open to take them if I still have time, which I don't know. Yeah. Any question about the robot, the emotion? Perfect. Yeah, maybe one. So I can loan you my own. Hey, hello, Maxim, uh, Montreal, Canada. Um, you know, when you are engaging robots with humans in a retail store and uh, let's say somebody get pissed uh, with the robot, you know, when you are dealing with a machine that doesn't work like you want, you don't feel bad about it, but if you engage emotion with a human and a robot, I don't know, uh, is there any law that will protect robots uh, like of aggressive person? Uh, we, I mean, oh, how do you feel about it yeah, in the future? I mean, I mean as, as you certainly know, there are laws in the other sense where, you know, what the so-called robotic laws that will protect humans against robots. There is no, no law today that will protect, I mean, you know, except that just, that just a device. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's really in terms of equipment and material. I mean, if you are going to damage a robot, it's like if you are going to damage a screen. So, I mean, it's something similar. So, and, and 
you know, when we talk about emotional empathy, it's, you know, it's the perception of a person who is dealing with the machine and the device. But at the end, I mean, there is no emotion and no feeling on that machine. I mean, even if it's important that people have, have this, that perception when they interact with, the, with the, the machine, it's just a machine. So, I mean, you know, all damage done to that should be treated as any damage due to any other equipment, really. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so maybe just time to say, um, yeah, Pepper. Maybe it's just time for us to say, um, yeah, I think he wants to leave, that's why, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> Pepper? Say goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, thanks everyone, thanks. Come here. Come on. Here I am. Good job. Yeah. <laughs>